All right, let's continue in chapter 11. But we have to remember where we're at. We're still in the sixth trumpet, which is the middle of the tribulation leading in to the end of the tribulation. This is the time that Satan is loosed upon earth, that the spirit of darkness, his spirits of darkness can move upon man and they will have authority over man and man will be ruling and reigning under their authority. And the consequences will be that one third of mankind will die as armies spread across the earth. And in chapter 10, remember we had Daniel's book, which is open, that was bitter, sweet in John's mouth, but bitter in his stomach. And then we came to chapter 11. In the beginning of it, John was giving, giving a measuring rod like a staff. And someone said, representing the temple that the Israelis, the Jews, will be building just before or during the beginning of the tribulation. And it is downplayed to a great extent. And it's not even said that it's measured. It's just said he had something like a staff. Remember, because the likes, when it came to the spirits of darkness, everything was like. They were all like what God was doing with his authority, but it wasn't that. And this isn't a measuring rod that you would measure with. It's like a staff. And someone said, downplaying it. And now we go to chapter 11, verse 3, and entering into another revelation in the book of Revelation. And in verse 3, and I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. This is going to be in Israel. The first three and a half years, there'll be these two witnesses prophesying, witnessing in Israel, dressed in sackcloth for mourning. And what are they mourning? That the Antichrist is coming. They're mourning Daniel's book. And they have great authority. God has granted them authority. And there's two of them. In the Old Testament, prophets were usually alone. But in the New Testament, the Lord sent his people out in twos. And you have these two witnesses. They're witnesses. What are they going to witness to? That the Messiah has already come. The Jews are still going to be when he comes. He already came. Sure, he's going to come at the end of the age. But God's not going back to the Old Testament sacrifices so you see in verse 4, these two, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord. These are two olive trees. Do you remember what we said as the spirits of darkness were coming out in the fifth seal? And in chapter 9, verse 4, and they were told that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God. And we said this is referring to people through the whole verse. The church that's now receiving the, the latter-day rain, that church is now bursting forth. They're growing. They're developing. And these evil spirits were not allowed to harm them. And here we have two olive trees. These are bursting forth. These are bursting forth with life from above. And two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. Saints, what we're going to have here, between here and verse 14, is coming down to the very middle of the tribulation. These two witnesses are witnessing, prophesying down to the very middle of the tribulation. And these two 
are warning the Israelis. They're prophesying. They're preaching. And remember, we're in the sixth trumpet. We're in that time that Satan's coming to power. We're in Daniel's book and what's going to happen here with this temple. And we're going to have these things played out between verse 4 and 13, right down to the middle of the tribulation. And we're going to find out that at that point, the time of the Gentiles has come to an end. The church will be raptured. The church as a whole will be raptured. And the time of the Gentiles will become to an end. And at the midpoint of the tribulation, we'll see that God's people are going to turn to him. And he'll turn back to them. Not in an Old Testament way. Not for the old sacrifices. Not for the old way. But they're going to turn to their Messiah knowing that he already came because of the witness of these two. And this entire thing from verse 3 to 13 is in Zechariah. The first four chapters of Zechariah are what takes place between verse 3 and verse 13. And we don't have time. I live in a wilderness area just to send these messages up. I have to drive between two mountains and try to get a signal. And for these short messages, it can take anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours to put these sh short messages online. So I'm going to go through this, and I hope we follow through here. And God gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. Because Zechariah chapters 1 through 4 are taking place right there, right there in chapter 11, the entire chapter up to 13. And I'm going to move through this quickly. You'll have to go back and read the whole thing in detail. But in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 2, it says, And the Lord was very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord, Return to me declares the Lord of hosts, that I may return to you. This is God calling the Jews back. This is the place where they will turn to him. This is leading to the end of the time of the Gentiles. And we look over in, we know that in verse 8 through 11, we have these horses in verse 8. I saw at night, and behold, a man was riding on a red horse, and he was standing among the myrtle trees, which were in the ravine. So we have these horses and this man on them. And remember in the seals, these men rode these horses because they were going out conquering the, and to conquer under God's authority? This is to the Jews. This is the horses where God has kept them. And as Zechariah is seeing these, then I said, my Lord, what are these? What are these horses? And the angel who was speaking with me said to me, I will show you what these are. And the man who was standing among the myrtle trees, the one who was riding the horses, said, these are those whom the Lord has sent to patrol the earth, just like in the first four seals. So they answered the angel of the Lord standing among the trees and said, We have patrolled the earth, and behold, all the earth is peaceful and quiet. This is more of those four winds being held back. This is more in regards to Israel as God having his authority and God and man working together upon the earth. And in verse 12, then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will them will thou have no compassion on Jerusalem and the cities of Judea, Judea which with which thou hast been indignant all these 70 years 70 the number of completion God has went to the Gentiles he has turned against Israel until this time of fulfillment this time of completion and in verse 14 so the angel who is speaking with me said to me proclaim saying 
Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am exceedingly jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. God is now showing in these two witnesses just what's happening in Zechariah, where they were rebuilding the temple, and they were coming together, and God was doing this work, and he's exceedingly jealous for them. And in verse 15, but I am very angry with the nations who are at ease, for while I was only a little angry, they furthered the disaster. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I will return to Jerusalem with compassion. My house will be built in it, not the house that the Jews are building, the house that God is building, the body of Christ, the temple of God. We are the temple of God. That's the house he's going to go back and build, declares the Lord of hosts. And look at here, saints, and a measuring line will be stretched over Jerusalem. Remember, John had something like a measuring rod, but we saw that angel at the end of Revelations with a gold measuring rod measuring Jerusalem. Because not God's not going back to the temple that the Jews are building. God's going back to the temple that he has built a temple not made of stone, a temple not made of hands, a living temple, the body of Christ, the temple of God. And in verse 17, again proclaimed, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities will again overflow with prosperity. And the Lord will again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem, because God's going to come back and rule and reign with us in the new Jerusalem. That is what this is talking about. It's referring to us and his finished work in his son. And in verse 18, then I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold, there were four horns. So I said to the angel who was speaking to me, what are these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These are those that have scattered my people. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen and I said, what are these coming to do? And he said, these are the horns which have scattered Judea, Judah, so that no man lifts his head. That's the horns. But these craftsmen have come to terrify them, to throw down the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter them. There's a work going to be done. God is now turning to Israel. Israel's going to turn to the Messiah in a real and living way. And there's going to be a work done. As the time of the Gentiles comes to a close, God's going to be turning to Israel again. And Israel will come to their Messiah. In chapter 2, verse 1, Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man with a measuring line in his hand. Remember John? Would that measure something like a rods, a staff? Here we are again. It's a perfect picture, saints. And it ultimately goes to that angel with the golden rod to measure Jerusalem. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see how wide it is and how long it is. And then we go down to verse 7. Ho, Zion, escape you who are living with the daughter of Babylon. Babylon falls. Babylon falls in one hour of one day, and we're shortly going to be coming to that. And Israel and the people of Israel have cohabitated, co-mingled with Babylon. And God is saying here, escape. You who are living with the daughter of Babylon, escape Babylon. Babylon controlled the Israeli people, and Babylon in the Old Testament fell. He's telling them to escape that and come to his kingdom, because he is now turning to Israel. And in verse 10 of chapter 2, Sing for joy and be glad, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst. He's telling them, Thus is coming to the middle of the tribulation when God's going to turn to the Jews. But the Antichrist is coming to oppose this. And in verse 11, 
Look at here, saints. And many nations will join themselves to the Lord in that day and will become my people. Then I will dwell in your midst and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Look at what is said there. Many nations will join themselves to the Lord in that day and will become my people. This is talking about the church age coming to a completion with the Gentiles. Many nations, people from every nation and tongue, as we saw in that vision in heaven of that angel show, John, a great multitude, hundreds of millions of people from every nation. This is them. They're coming. Then I will dwell in their midst, and you will know that I am the Lord of hosts, has sent me to you. And look at verse 12. And the Lord will possess Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. This is what's going to be taking place here in chapter 11, saints. This is what we're coming up to. This is the point of the two witnesses to turn Israel to the living God. Not in an Old Testament way, but to prepare for his coming and to prepare for his coming by getting saved and washed in the blood and prepared. And chapter 3, verse 1, and what's going on? We're just talking about that. These things ride and roll together. I need you to go back and read over these things to put it all together. I'm going to show you what I can. But chapter 3, verse 1, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan was standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now this is representing Israel, the people of Israel. We're the priests of the living God. Once they accept Christ and they start to follow him and they're washed in his blood, they will be the priests of the living God. And what's going on here? 3.3, three. now Joshua was clothed in filthy clothes and standing before the Lord. Joshua, represented by people of Israel, are in their filthy garments. They're outside of God's purpose. They're in the world. They're in Babylon. They're in Egypt. And they haven't accepted their Messiah. They're in filthy garments. And as God is going to do this, close out the time of the Gentiles and go to the Jews, he has to have them cleansed. He has to have them with their wedding gowns on, their priestly garments and he spoke and said to me in verse 4, those who are standing before him saying, remove the filthy garments from him. Again, he said to him, see, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and you will be clothed with festive robes. God is washing them in the blood of Christ, as we're going to see here. God is bringing them to the cross. God is bringing them to the death side of the cross to be crucified, to give up their life, to lay down their life, to present their body a living sacrifice to the Messiah that has already come. And then they'll partake in the resurrection life side, as you will very shortly see. And verse 5, then I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing there. This is the anointing of God. This is them receiving the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit come upon them and the people of Israel, these priests, these chosen, these that are going to be a part of the temple of God too, they're anointed by the Holy Spirit as they receive the Holy Spirit and receive their Messiah. In verse 7, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will perform my service, my service, then you will also govern my house and also have charge of my courts. And I will grant you free access among these who are standing here. And look at verse 9. Oh, let's go to verse 8, the last half of it. He says, for behold, I am going to bring in my servant the branch. This is referring to the Lord. This is referring to the Messiah. They know that. They know this. 
and he's telling them, I'm going to bring in my servant, the branch. In verse 9, for behold, the stone that I have set before Joshua, on one stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave an inscription on it, declares the Lord, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. One day when? The very middle of the tribulation. You're going to see, as chapter 11 plays out to verse 13, all of these things that we're seeing in Zechariah are there. And now let's go to chapter 4, verse 2. And he said to me, what do you see? This angel in this vision says to Zechariah, what do you see? And I said, I see and behold a lampstand, all of gold with its bowls, with its bowl on the top of it, and its seven lamps on it with seven spouts belonging to each of the lamps which are on the top. We have these sevens, this completion, this perfection, this bringing the Israeli people to their Messiah. And in verse 3, also two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on the left. This is the two witnesses in Israel represented here, represented there. It's almost exactly the same thing. Then I answered and said to the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my Lord, asking about these olive trees, these lamps? And the angel who was speaking with me answered me and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and said to me, this is the, world, the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, the one who was in charge, who was ruling at that time, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. These things that are going to be done right here in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation, these things we're about to see, they're not by man with man's hands building a temple of stone. They're going to be God's work. They're going to be done by God, by God's spirit as he prepares us the body of Christ, to be his temple, the temple of the living God, a work of and by and through God. Look at verse 7. What are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become a plain. Nothing is going to stop this from being done. Any obstacle, no matter how big, will not stop God from now getting his people back as he ends the time of the Gentiles. And look at, at the last half of that. And he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. What's it talking about here? We're the temple of God. The Lord was the chief cornerstone. The apostles are the foundation. We've been building up on that foundation for over 2,000 years. The top is not finished yet. The top will once again be the Israelis, the Jews, coming to the Lord. And as they come, they will be, they will represent, they will fulfill, they will complete the temple, the top. Then what does it say here? And he will bring forth the top stone, right to the last stone, is what's going to happen in the last half of the tribulation. As this temple, not the temple the Jews are making by hand, but the temple of God, the work of God, by his spirit, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, as he, through these witnesses, and through what's going to happen to them, turns the Israelis to the Lord. And in verse 10, For who has despised the day of small things? But these seven will be glad when they see the plumb line in the hand of Jerusalem. These are the eyes of the Lord, which reign to and fro. Once again, a plumb line, getting this work done, measuring it out. Then I answered in verse 11 and said to him, 
what are these two olive trees on the right and on the left? And I answered the second time, what are these two branches which are beside the golden pipes, which empty the golden oil from themselves? So he answered and said to me, John saying, what is this? Who are these? And he answered and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who are standing by the Lord of the whole earth. We have a perfect picture here, saints, a perfect picture of what's going on here. God is bringing the time of the Gentiles to an end. The church is so worried. Oh, I don't want to go into the tribulation. I didn't kill. Oh, I'm a lamb. Oh, I'm a dove. God would never allow that. You're not destined to wrath. Those bowls of wrath were the same thing as the trumpets, but they're the outcome of the evil, ungodly people following Satan at the end of the tribulation. We have been brought up now in the sixth trumpet to the middle of the tribulation. Remember those beings from hell were told they couldn't harm you? You're going to be out there preaching the gospel as we will see further in head and what messages you will be preaching. You will be preaching them in power and glory. You will have the latter day rain on you. You will be full of the Holy Spirit. You will be doing the work of God. And other, other than that moderate sized asteroid hitting in the ocean off that nation, which brought down the governments of the world and did destroy a third of that nation. Other than that, saints, we're at the middle. We're coming up on the seventh trumpet. We're at the middle here. We're entering the middle of the tribulation. Other than that, and there's been giant disasters on the earth. Other than that one disaster and the effects and your messages to learn, there hasn't been anything happen. Everything that's been terrible that these horsemen will be responsible and these armies will be responsible for the death of the third of the world haven't happened yet. So we come up here to Revelations chapter 11 again, and it says again, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. A perfect picture. Here was John in chapter 1 with that same measuring line, measuring out. And not the temple every time it's referring to Jerusalem. Because God's temple that's coming back is huge. We'll see it later. It's magnificent. It's beyond belief. God's not coming back to a temple that men made of stone. So we have these two witnesses and great authority has been given them from the beginning of the tribulation to the middle of the tribulation. These are those lampstands we just read about. And verse 5, And if anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone de would desire to harm them, in this manner he must be killed. Now we got lots of teachers out there teaching you that these two prophets, these two witnesses, they will have literal fire coming out of their mouth, like some kind of an online game. Saints, don't make the word ridiculous. Keep it sensible. What does God say about this? In Jeremiah 5, 14, Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, because you have spoken this word, Behold, I am making my words in your mouth fire, and this people would, and it will consume them. What is God saying here? It's not fire is going to come out of these two saints' mouth. It's the word of God in power and in glory. Remember in Acts where they were selling their properties and a husband and his wife come up and lied about it? and they drop down dead, the power and the glory here will be so far beyond that, it will be unimaginable. These two will speak the word of God in power and glory. That's the fire coming out of their mouth. And anybody that the 
out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone would desire to harm them in this manner, he must be killed. In what manner? In the manner of the power and the glory of the word of God. Whether it's something right there that happens to them or when they die or at the end of the tribulation, they are going to pay for what they did. This fire is the word of God. And the next message will start in the seventh verse. We'll start in the sixth verse in the next message.